Welcome to the Don't Blink YouTube channel, and today we'll be talking about position lock. So what is position lock? Well, position lock is something that we use this season to defend ourselves against other robots, especially in the autonomous period. This allowed us to take full advantage of our push auto and made sure that we could defend against other teams who might have been trying to get back into their position, such as Wolfpack, and it made sure that we are always able to get back to our center position so we can always get at least one or two cones off the high pole, no matter what. So since this impacted our season so much, we just wanted to share it with the community so other people could use this for the next few seasons. So now for the lock two explanation. So let's first start on a blank canvas where our robot has been pushed. To get back to our target position, the easiest way would just be to provide power to this motor and this motor, which would make our robot go diagonal and towards the target position. But what do we do when the robot is not just of power to one or two motors away? Well, we can use weighted power. And here we can see different positions that a robot could be in. And the weighted power would allow us to go more in the x direction than in the y direction, or more in the y direction than in the x direction. And this functionality can be achieved by using the dot set weighted drive power method in Roadrunner. And this takes in a post 2D of weights, where we, we would have our weights being the distance x, where between our target position and our current position, and our dis distance y and our distance henny. The dot set weighted drive power method uses this data to actually take us in the most efficient way towards our target position. So now, before we end it there, there's more to it, as our heading poses another problem. When the robot gets its pose estimate, it doesn't put the heading and your, your x and y coordinates together. And though we may visualize something like this, it'll actually give us something like this, where the entire frame and the entire coordinate plane is shifted. And so though this is what we might see on the field, this is what the robot would see. And so all we have to do is adjust it to go back to the main central position. So you can see that this all this is is rotating the plane by say 45 degrees. Now the distance while rotating is the same, but the actual weights will differ because of the difference in coordinates. And this is important because one might have to go more in the x direction than the y direction, but when it's actually rotated it might go more in the x, y direction than in the x direction. So this can be achieved by using a rotational matrix, which takes in this line and a vector, and it rotates the set of coordinates by theta degrees. And so theta would be your current heading in this case, because you'd be going, say, like 45 degrees from your central zero degree position. Now, by using the rotational matrix to go from here to here, all you have to do is go the opposite of your current heading. Because if you go theta degrees this way, then you just have to go negative theta to go back. So theta would just be the negative current heading that you would input into the rotational matrix. Now, Runbeer will go on to explain the code. Moving on to the actual code and implementation, you can start by making a new class with the name of your choice. I'm just calling it lock to test. And we need to extend the linear op mode and implement the according methods. Okay, now we can start by making the lock to method. So we're going to do public void lock to. We need to supply the target position that the robot needs to lock to. So we can do that by making a post 2D called target position.
And now we need to get the current position of our robot. So we're just gonna make another pose 2D and we're gonna call it current pose, short for current position. And we need to set this equal to the sample mechanism drive object, which is given by Roadrunner. So sample mechanism drive drive is equal to new sample mechanism drive and the hardware map. So now the current position is going to be equal to drive dot get pose estimate. Next, we are going to calculate the difference between both of these positions. So we can do that by making another pose 2D and we can call this difference. And we're going to set this equal to the target position minus the current position. So make sure to use the minus method. You can't just subtract it. And in the next line, we are going to make a vector 2D called XY. And we're going to set this equal to the difference dot vec dot rotated uh, of the negative current position dot get heading. So this line might be a little confusing to understand, but it basically moves the 2D coordinate plane to the same position that the curve pose, pose 2D, this, this value, it's gonna move the coordinate plane to the same value that this was recorded in. This basically makes sure that the movements are doing the same thing. You can imagine your robot moving forward and then your robot turning and then moving forward. Those two movements aren't the same because the robot's heading was turned. So this line will keep everything constant by using the heading that was recorded in the current pose variable, hence the negative current pose dot get heading. Okay, next we're actually gonna get the difference uh, in heading. So we're just gonna do double heading and we're gonna set this equal to angle dot norm delta we're going to do the target position dot get heading and we're going to subtract this from the angle dot norm delta the current position dot get heading okay next we can apply the powers to the drivetrain so we can just do drive dot set weighted drive power and then we can give it another post 2d and in here, we're just going to give the XY value and the heading. Okay, so this is your lock to method. And the reason you see overshooting in the sample video of our lock to method uh, was because we actually incorporated some PID. So it moves to the desired position more aggressively. You can do that by simply making uh, variables so I can just do um, like double x, y, p. We're going to set this equal to 1 for now. Then we're going to make another one, heading p. And we're also going to set this equal to 1. But these values require fine tuning based off of um, like what you want. But uh, once you have found those values, you can just do x, y dot times the x, y, p. And then here, you can just multiply the value because they're both on um, double so double heading and then double heading p so by the greater the value you set both of these the more aggressive it will move to that position so that might lead to like more um overshooting but if you want it to be like as accurate as possible and get it right first try you might want to go for like a smaller value but for us we wanted to make sure that it locks onto the position as efficiently and aggressively as possible so that we like push the other robot out of the way. So that was only the lock two method we got done, but now we still have to actually see it working. So inside of the run op mode, uh, we need to do a wait for start. This basically just waits for you to click play on the driver station. And next, uh, we're just gonna have a while op mode is active and in here we're just gonna lock to with a new pose 2d and i'm just gonna set the, the values as zero but obviously you would have to set it to the values you want and 
in order to make sure that everything functions properly, we need to keep updating the drive object. So it keeps reading the correct values from your odometry. And yeah, that basically finishes the log2 test. That concludes the log2 video. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on our Discord, which we'll leave in the video description. And that's it for now. See you guys next time.